Welcome back to Golden Black Live. Joining us now, number nine, uh, the Purdue All-American Mark Herman, of course, played in West Lafayette from 1977 to 1980, matriculated up I-65 from Carmel High School, and he really set this Purdue football program into the stratosphere for all of you who remember, like I do as a kid growing up in Tippecanoe County, West Lafayette High School, going to the games in Ross H Stadium. The place was packed and the football was filled with airs. The, the air was filled with footballs, I should say. Uh, and again, Mark, it's great to have you here. Uh, and uh, again, before we dig into some of your past, I'd just like to get your impressions on Jeff Brom's job here in West Lafayette year three, and in particular, how you see this 2019 uh, season unfolding. Well, Jeff has been fabulous. Um, you know, he has brought an offensive expertise um, uh, a preparedness, um, uh, his recruiting is, is great. So uh, I think you combine those two things, just knowledge of the game, you know, playing the position of quarterback, coaching, playing in the league. Uh, you combine all those elements and you have uh, a pretty good recipe for a great coach. And I, and I think that's, uh, he's done a tremendous job. You know, this cupboard was pretty bare when he took the job. and had a couple of miraculous years to start his tenure. And then, you know, the injury bug and then some, you know, a small senior class has kind of uh, kind of tarnished this year's results. But but you see that every week you feel like there's a chance and, and that's all you can ask for a fan. And uh, and you feel like this is going to be a competitive team. It's going to be a team that's fun to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to do some fun things offensively and they're going to get after you defensively. So. Uh, I, I just, uh, I'm so pleased he's here. I, I think he is a guy that could maybe have a Kirk Ferentz kind of tenure and, and hopefully be here 20 years, but I don't know if that's in the cards for Jeff. But uh, uh, no, I, I've uh, totally been a big fan of his, and I think he's doing a great job. Now you played for a pretty intense coach and in Jim Young, and Jeff Brom, as you well know, is a pretty intense guy. So that was a coaching style that you obviously responded to. Right. I, I made that comment before. I think they're very similar type coaches. Uh, coach Young was such a goal-oriented uh, type of coach and uh, was detail-oriented. Um, you know, he, he had us prepared. He had us mentally motivated. And, um, you know, he had that Big Ten Midwest background. He coached for Bo Schembechler and, and went to school in Ohio. So he knew what Big Ten football was all about, and he knew for us to be competitive – we had to pay, play at our very best every week. We had to give some different wrinkles like Jeff Brom is doing. Uh, you know, we weren't going to pound the ball. We had to spread teams out and throw it and then mix in the run a little bit. So I, I, I think they are very similar, and, and I think that that intensity, you need that. I mean, young kids want that, want that direction. You know, you got to get after them sometimes, and I, and I think Jeff has shown that, and certainly <laughs> – Coach Young has uh, had shown that uh, when I was here. Obviously, you got here for the very first year of Jim Young in 1977. I'm always fascinated by backstories on, on how people got to certain places. Um, kind of walk us through the process of you choosing Purdue. I mean, were you recruited and did you commit to Alex Agassi? When did Jim Young come in the picture? And why did you ultimately pull the trigger and say, I'm going to come to West Lafayette and be a Boilermaker? Yeah, it was, um, it was a different kind of process back then. Everything was uh, pretty compact, and, uh, you know, they weren't coming to see you as sophomores, and, uh, you know, you didn't have your Internet highlight reel to send around. Yeah. So um, I came up to visit, actually, the, uh, the day that the Boilers beat Michigan wow, okay. um, and that big upset yeah. and uh, – you know, Coach Agassi was there, and, and I enjoyed the day and uh, talked to the coaches. And, you know, when I went there with an open mind just to kind of see how things were run, and uh, I came away impressed. And then um, certainly looked at Notre Dame very closely. Um, you know, I grew up a Catholic boy, still am, and, uh, you know, that, uh, that desire to go there was, was pretty strong. So uh, I went up and co talked to Coach Dan Devine and um, – I don't know. He, I, I didn't get that sense of, oh, gosh, we'd love to have you. You know, it was almost if you didn't come, there was another guy behind you that we'd take, and it's probably just as good. So, uh, And also looked at Michigan State. I, I wanted to stay kind of close. And they were throwing the ball a little bit uh, with Daryl Rogers uh, mm -hmm. as the coach. So, um, But 
you know, what dissuade it was Coach Young gets the job, came down to Carmel, and we sat down, and, and he mapped out a strategy for if I would happen to be the guy that he would design the offense around me. He showed me some films of the University of Arizona, and they were running some good things uh, in the passing game, and, and he knew my style, and he knew that I wasn't going to run the option or, or do, you know, a lot of quarterback sweeps. He, he would design a, a pro passing game, and and uh, and he said, you know, you're going to get every opportunity uh, to be the guy, and if you are, we'll take care of you. So if not Purdue, where? Are they? Well, I I still think I probably would have gone to Notre Dame. Yeah. I that 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 magnetism there was still there, but um, you know, ultimately, I I made the best choice. Obviously, uh, you know, I got to play early, and and we had a lot of success. Yeah, so Mark, you uh, didn't start the very first game of your career, but you came in, and then. You were off and running from there. Um, went to bowl games three years in a row. Won all three of their bowl games. Mark, of course, was the MVP of each of those bowl games. And we were talking before we came on camera. I'm sure others of you out there realize 40 years ago, 1979, Purdue won 10 games. The only time in school history the Boilers have ever won 10 games. And this, of course, is the it's the 40th anniversary that Mark was a quarterback, a junior that year, and I'll never forget watching, um, watching the, the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl in Houston, Texas, where Purdue took on, uh, took on Tennessee. Mark, talk a little bit about that 1979 team from 40 years ago, some of your memories. Uh, again, I share with you the Notre Dame game and Michigan game at home, but there were many highlights for that season, I'm sure, for you and your yeah, teammates. Yeah, they really were, Tom. And, and we came off a great year the prior year, 9-2-1, and one, and we had a lot of starters back. And uh, we really felt like uh, this is going to be a team that uh, could do some damage. And uh, we got off to a kind of a slow start, went out to uh, um, UCLA. UCLA, and, and they thumped us pretty good. They had a, they had a great team. And, uh, you know, it was 90 degrees at 7 o'clock at night, smog all over the place. So it was not a not a great atmosphere. And they were talented. They had a, they were a really good team. And and um, and then we lost to Minnesota early, which probably was the lowest point of that season. We went up there and just laid an egg, didn't play well, and had some turnovers, uh, drop punts inside the five-yard line. So, And I've never seen Coach Young so upset. And, and from then on, I think – we really figured, hey, we've got to we've got to be at our best every week. So we went on a seven-game winning streak and won ten games and, and beat Tennessee. There, were, you know, so many talented guys, great leaders, the Keena Turners, Pete Quinns, Bart Burles, all those guys uh, were were magnificent, and we just had a great cohesive unit. And and of course, Coach Young, uh, you know, directed us the, the entire way. And and to cap it off, cap off that decade uh, with a come-behind victory against a you know perennial traditional powerhouse in Tennessee, I, I think that really capped off the season and, and just made it. And little did we know that that would be the only 10-win season here at yeah. Purdue. You uh, talked about your affinity for Notre Dame a moment ago. You beat the Irish in Ross Aid Stadium in 1979. What did that mean to you? Well, that was that was a great thrill. Uh, as we talked about, I think that's the highest attended game. Uh, I remember bringing... They had temporary bleachers all over, yeah. and it was uh, it was a great atmosphere, a beautiful day, and uh, we got behind late in the game. But I remember our game-winning drive, and I remember the play that put us up. It was a um, it was kind of a faked the dive and, and come and, and throw a slant route to Bart Burrell, who was the split end to the right side. If he had press coverage, he'd give me a signal that he was going to run the takeoff, and. Uh, um, so we were at about the seven-yard line, and I saw that signal and you know, did my fake and just threw the fade route to him, and he came up with a big catch to, to win the game. And so, um, you know, any time you can beat your rival and any time that, you know, a, a team that I really strongly considered, that was very satisfying. And, and I think that game kind of put us in the national discussion that uh, maybe we were a team to be reckoned with that year. And, uh, so we moved on and, yeah, and won that Michigan game later in the year, as you mentioned. And in 1980, Mark, your senior year, um, you capped it by going to the Liberty Bowl. They beat a, a pretty good Missouri team, mm -hmm. quarterback by Phil Bradley, of course, who went on to Major League Baseball fame with a number of teams. That year, um, I told Mark, too, before he came on camera, I still have at home my Herman for Heisman bumper sticker. <laughs> and Mark finished fourth in the Heisman Trophy balloting in 1980. Of course, that was George Rogers of South Carolina, 
Herschel Walker probably should have won it as a true freshman in Georgia. I'm not sure who the third was. Hugh Green from jo Pittsburgh. Yeah, <laughs> Hugh Green. <laughs> I remember. My God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then there's and then Mark Herman was fourth. Um, I mean that that whole ceremony has become a spectacle now, as you know. I mean, t tell tell us how you discovered where you finished in the ballot and how that process ran back in 1980. Yeah, it's uh, it's totally different. Uh, I didn't make the trip to New York for that the announcement. Uh, they had all of us there during the week, and we talked to, I think it was Brian Gumble on the Today Show, and, and huh. the four of us were there. And um, uh, so, yeah, that was kind of just a, a regular interview, and, and so it was it was just a total guess <laughs> who was going to be in the in the finals there. And so, yeah, I, it would have been great to, you know, be in the crowd and, and, and take part in that yeah. whole ceremony, but that just wasn't the way it was. And, uh, you know, I, I felt I had a good chance all along, and then we went up to Ann Arbor, and that's kind of been our house mm -hmm. of horrors, and, uh, and they, they did a great job of defending us. And, and uh, so I, I didn't play well that day, and that kind of sealed my fate. But uh, it was just fun to be in the conversation, and, you know, I tried not to worry about that. I just tried about, you know, leading our team and doing what we needed to do. And, um, you know, if the numbers came uh, about from that, then fine. But it was just a, um, you know, it, it, it does get to be some pressure around it. And, you know, the, the more you get deeper into the season, you know, those things keep coming up. But, uh, you know, I, I tried to keep it on the back burner. Of course, Mark left college football as the number one passer. Nobody had thrown for more passes in the history of college football when Mark left after the 1980 season. I believe it was over 9,000 yards. Sort of give you an idea of, of his skill set, obviously, and how cutting edge, and I guess ahead of the times Purdue's offense was in many respects 40 years ago. And then Mark, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the NFL, too. You're a fourth-round pick of the Denver Broncos. Spent a couple years out there. Didn't play much, but then you were part of one of the most famous trades and not just NFL history, but sports history. <laughs> tell, tell us about your involvement in that, maybe how you found out about it all. Yeah, that was, that was crazy. I, as you mentioned, I didn't play any of my rookie year, and then I played in a couple games my, the second year, and it was a strike-shortened year in 82, yeah, yeah. so we didn't have that many opportunities. So uh, I was all excited about year three and maybe having a chance to challenge for that starting role and, and get an opportunity to play. And, uh, you know, Steve DeBerg was on the roster. Craig Morton had recently retired, so I thought this was my chance. And and I, I didn't really know what was going on behind the scenes. I knew John Elway did not want to go to Baltimore, and he was threatening to go to the Yankees and play baseball. Uh, so the draft comes and goes, and they select him. And then, um, you know, in May, I get a call from Dan Reeves and said, Mark, uh, <laughs> we're trading you to the Baltimore Colts. And I go, oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, you're kidding me. And he said, yeah, we're, we're going to bring in John Elway. So you yeah, work for Frank Cush. Oh, for, for, yeah, <laughs> playing for Frank Cush. And I was going through my mind running Mount Cush. And yeah, yeah and somehow he put all this dirt together in Baltimore. We're going to run up this hill. So so I was shocked. I was disappointed. Uh, you know, my dreams of playing in Denver my whole career were out the window. And then um, so I had to kind of regroup and say, OK, hey, this is a little obstacle. And go to the Baltimore and make the best of it and, and just see what that's all about. So, yeah, that whole thing. And, uh, you know, I, I talked to people, who, you know, it was kind of a little known asterisk in the, in the deal that I was part of that trade. So, um, yeah, it was, it was disappointing back then. But, you know, that, it's all about survive and advance yeah. in the NFL. And if you can keep a job, then that, that's what it's all about. And you survived and advanced for a while. You played, I know, 83 in Baltimore. You came with the Colts back to your hometown in 1984, and I believe you were off the San Diego Chargers. Mm -hmm. and, and I looked it up, your best year, I believe, was 1985. Statistically, yeah. you played the most. That's when you threw, like, 10 touchdown passes, over 1,000 yards passing that year. Then played a little bit with the Rams. And you were there in 88 and 89, and you were there with Jim Everett. Talk, mm -hmm. talk about playing with Jim Everett in L.A. Yeah, it was, it was great. Um, you know, after those San Diego years, um, Ernie Zampezi was our offensive coordinator under Don Coriel. And, um, and as you mentioned, those were my best years and, and really enjoyed that. And then the opportunity, Ernie went up to the Rams and was their coordinator under John Robinson. Mm -hmm. And so I, I briefly came back to the Colts just for the training camp. And then they released me and 
Ernie calls me and said, hey, we, we'd love you to come back and, and be the backup for Jim. And uh, so they signed me right at the end of training camp, and uh, they released the other two quarterbacks and kept me on as the backup. So I kind of felt I, I was the old stable mate to the thoroughbred, and, you know, it was great because I originally helped recruit Jim yeah, to yeah. – uh, to Purdue and, and we had a great relationship. So, and he was really playing well with the Rams and uh, yeah. we had really some good teams and we played the uh, 49ers in the NFC championship yeah. game and they, they, uh, they routed us pretty good. But it was, uh, it was a great time for those two years and uh, just to be around Jim and, and some good offense. And um, so, yeah, those were, those were a lot of fun. The 89 team was very good. The last NFL question for you, I gotta know. The 1992 season opens, the Indianapolis Colts starting quarterback is Mark Herman, and he leads them to victory, and then they released him? <laughs> yeah. Uh, doesn't get much worse than that, does Are you it? still yeah. dumbfounded? Or well, I, I've kind of... <laughs> Don't want to talk get, about well, it? Well, no, it, it, it's kind of comical now that you look back. But, uh, yeah, uh, Coach Marcha Broda said you're going to start the opening game. and um, So I was excited, prepared like crazy, yeah. getting ready for the Cleveland Browns, and um, started the game. Uh, we won the game 14-3, uh, to 3, I think. I was the offensive player of the game, got the game ball, and, you know, life is good. You know, back in Indianapolis, first time the Colts had won a home opener mm -hmm. since they moved to, to Indy, so uh, we had a nice celebration in our neighborhood that night. It was Labor Day weekend, as I recall. Go back in, excited to watch the film, and one of the administrators said, uh, you know, Mark, Jimmy Ursay would like to talk to you. So I said, okay, great. We'll talk about next week's game. And I came in and sat you to me, and there's Ted Marchabroda way over in the corner of the office. I thought, well, this is a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, puzzling. So Jimmy said, uh, you know, great job yesterday. You were such a big part of this win. Congratulations, you know, this and that. And, uh, but, you know, we're going to release you. We're going to let you go. <laughs> so from then on, I didn't hear a word and, yeah. uh, you know, drove home and, and just total shock. And, and uh, you know, my career was over that day. So. Still a Purdue icon, always will be a Purdue icon. Real quick, Mark, last thing, tell us what you're doing for, for uh, I guess, the, the Craner School. Yeah, Tom, um, I was a Craner graduate uh, back in 81 and uh, just, just valued that whole education process and uh, just being a student athlete and the opportunity to come back and give back a little bit to Purdue and to Cranert. Um, I am now the Director of Corporate and Foundation Relations for Cranert, so um, I go out and seek opportunities, fundraising opportunities, but more, more than that, um, give our students an opportunity to have some um, awareness with, with companies and enable them and our faculty to, to be able to, uh, to get those chances and, and, and establish careers. So uh, this is into my sixth year, and wow. you know we've, uh, it's a great time at Purdue now. You know we've set fundraising records, and so. Uh, with the leadership of Mitch Daniels, I, I think it's just been so gratifying for me to be on campus every day and just to watch young students and, and give them a great opportunity to succeed. So it's been wonderful. There he is, Mark Herman, number nine. We appreciate him taking time to join us in his busy schedule, get the, uh, the lowdown on his uh, recruitment to Purdue, his current thoughts on the Boilers, NFL career, and even more. Mark, we really appreciate you stopping by, sir. My pleasure, Tom. Good to see you. When we come back, we're going to talk to another number nine, another Purdue football icon, Stuart Schweiger, the playmaker, will join us. So stay tuned. <laughs> Let's Farm agent Trent Johnson handle all the moving parts to your insurance. Whether it's for auto, home, life, or financial services,